It was now day 35, and the rule of the experiment I was finding increasingly hard to maintain was exercise. My motivation had plummeted. Hello, Sharon. How are you feeling? Oh, well, if you could see me, you would not recognise me because there's a few pimples that have arrived. There's a lot of fat really? and fullness in my face and my, my tummy is really quite something to behold. I can't fit into my favourite new shorts anymore, which is a bit disappointing. When did the pimples break out? <laughs> uh, about three days ago. Um, it's probably your liver reacting. Um, often uh, skin conditions and are related to her liver functioning. So if someone's on a, a sort of like high processed sugar diet, you'll see it in their eyes, you'll see bags under the eyes, you'll see it in their skin, whether they're, they're here or they're just really drawn and lethargic. Sugar's effects on me physically were obvious, but my cravings for it and the mental toll it was taking prompted me to explore what it was doing to my brain. So I took my pimply face to the Oregon Research Institute. This group of scientists, who I'm trusting enormously, own this colossal magnetic sucking machine called an fMRI, which they are gonna put me and my brain into. They will then show me images of this high sugar, low fat milkshake, and then feed me the milkshake through a special mega straw. Then they'll take some photos of my brain and show me how it reacted. First step is that we see what's called a cue or a trigger, which in my case was the milkshake. It can be a picture of one or the real thing. Now, when we see this sugary cue or trigger, a chemical called dopamine is released in our brain. This is an evolutionary urge when sweetness was rare. So when we saw it, our brain said, get that, because you need it for quick energy and to feel good. Now, the next step is that we get the sugary item. We bring it to our mouth and we taste its sweetness. It's then that chemicals called opioids, beta endorphins are released, and we feel terrific. Sugar lights up the same reward areas of nicotine, cocaine, and sex. But it doesn't last long. Now, if some of us eat sugary foods often enough and establish this happy feeling of reward, it can create subconscious or mindless habits, which are easily triggered by more images of sugary foods. Throw into the mix that the fructose half of sugar also affects our appetite control centers, plus the glucose half affects our moods. And suddenly, we have a very volatile combination on our hands. One of the very interesting emerging findings in this literature is the more you eat high sugar foods, the more you're gonna desire high sugar foods and wanna continue eating them. Give me that old-fashioned morphine. This desire to wanna to keep eating more sugary foods sounds a lot like addictive behavior. Give me that old-fashioned morphine. Serge Ahmed, who's now in, uh, in Bordeaux in France, published a really cool study um, where he basically showed that rats will work harder for sugar than they will for cocaine. Unlike the drug dealer who is, you know, is squired away someplace hiding, the food giants are in your face everywhere you go. In the boardrooms of these food giants, addiction is a dirty word. When it comes to obesity and illness, the food industry have always argued that people need to take personal responsibility for their food choices. When it comes to eating, 
fat people are basically very stupid. But you see, I was away this weekend, and it is difficult in friends' houses. OK, Mrs Wright, no more chocolate. For more than 50 years, the food industry has insisted that obesity is caused by too many calories and not enough exercise, which implies that anyone overweight is simply lazy or greedy. OK, so we just passed halfway. And I've never counted calories in my life. I'm trying my best in this experiment. It's hard to be accurate, obviously. But it looks like my calories so far are pretty much exactly the same as they were pre-experiment. And that feels strange because I feel like I'm eating a lot more. But I can see here that when I was eating pre-experiment avocado and nuts and stuff, there's a lot more calories in fat than there is in sugar. So, in fact, it's half, like nine calories per gram of fat, whereas sugar's only got four calories. So I can see why we're told that sugar's OK and don't eat fat, because there's less calories. But I'm eating the same amount of calories as I did before, but my liver's turned to fat, my belly's chasing my ladies. It's doing something in my brain, we know that now, and I'm not feeling full. So it feels like the calories from sugar behave very differently to other calories. Sugar industry absolutely dependent on this idea that it's just about energy balance. Because if there's something uniquely deleterious about sugar, then they're in the realm that cigarettes are in, tobacco and lung cancer. But if it's just about eating too much or not exercising too little, if a calorie of sugar is no different than a calorie of broccoli, they're fine. Just tell people to moderate their weight. If you're getting fat, eat less, and that's all there is. So the sugar industry also sort of pushed this idea that a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. And yet these calories do dramatically different things in the human body, and they always have. <laughs>